Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Fantastic. We are really excited. Thank you for joining us today. And um, thank you to all the media that's on the call. We are um, happy to get 2023 started. But as a housekeeping reminder, please use the raised hand icon um, to raise your hand so that I know um, that you want to ask a question. And uh, we will go ahead and get started with Brian Sandalo from the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, hi, Ezra. Thanks for making some time uh, this afternoon. Um, hi, Ezra. Um, just uh, wondering, first of all, what's your reaction to uh, the John Duran uh, transfer yesterday? And then second, how do you go about replacing him? Do you think you have in options in-house to replace him or will you need to hit the transfer market to uh, get another striker? Well, first of all, I just want to say I'm, I'm happy for uh, John. Um, you know, I mentioned last day how high of a ceiling this guy had, had and how um, special of a player he was. Um, and to see, you know, after just, you know, one year in the league, you know, a, a team from the EPL uh, showing interest and purchasing him, uh, that, that speaks volume for, you know, the talent that that kid possessed. So we're all happy for him. You know, obviously as a coach, you know, you want to keep uh, – players uh, who are producing uh, for as long as you can, but you know, within this business that, that things like this happen. Um, as far as replacing them, you know, it's, you know, we uh, determined in the off season that there's a, a possibility that this would happen. So it's been ongoing as far as us trying to find um, suitable replacement, but uh, the key is, you know, it's not to rush uh, into anything. Um, we do have players here who have, have proven uh, that they can score in this league. Um, but uh, we know that we need to uh, have add some additional players, and um, that's one position that we we always thought that we'd have to uh, add. And so we have ongoing talks with a couple um, players, but nothing is final as yet. But we hope to uh, within the next uh, coming weeks before the season starts. Thank you. Next, we will go with Russell Wifey from ONTAP Sportsnet. Coach, um, good afternoon. How are you doing? A happy belated birthday too. Um, Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, so the I've got two questions. The first one is, um, what's the latest report in camp? Um, do you have any injuries? Um, we got an email, uh, 30 players actually reported. Is Shakiri part of it? And if it's not, when is he going to be part of the entire team that will be heading to Cancun in Mexico? Yeah, so we have um, everyone in camp um, except for Shaq. Um, all the injured players from last year, you know, Casper, Gaston, Torres, uh, Herbers, Wyatt Olmsberg, everyone is in camp um, and has been training the past few days. So that's always uh, a plus for us because we know that, you know, if we had these players in the latter part of the season last year, things could have ended differently for us. Um, but you know, it is what it is. That's in the past, but it's glad to have these guys back in training. Um, we've been very careful as far as how we're prolonging these guys because some of them, you know, have been out for about six months or so. So we have to be very careful that we, when the season starts, we go in with a full complement of players uh, without uh, injuries or minimal injuries uh, as much as possible. As far as Shaq, you know, uh, this is a situation where, you know, Shaq, basically played a, a season and a half, you know, coming from Lyon and then playing the full season with us and then ended up going to the World Cup, which we know is physically and mentally de demanding. So we want to make sure that we give him an extra couple of days uh, to, you know, sort of regroup and, and get, take a break uh, so he doesn't get burned out because we, we all know how long and grueling the MLS season can be, you know, so with the traveling and, and stuff like that. So we want to make sure that we give him a couple extra days uh, to rest, but he'll had to Cancun with us on, on Friday. So, and we're looking forward to, because he's such an integral part of what we do and, and how we play as a team, we want to make sure that you know, that piece of it is, is uh, hitting the ground running, so to speak, as it, when the season starts. So we wanted to just give him an extra couple of days off. Thank you. Next, we'll go back to Brian. Hey, Ezra, uh, just back to uh, the Duran sale. Um, obviously, you guys have made um, a priority, uh, one priority of selling players to Europe, whether it's Selena or Duran, or even before you got here, uh, Frankowski. 
Um, how do you balance that, you know, with winning and how difficult is it to balance the idea of selling players and moving them on while winning? Well, ideally for us, we'd like to be both, you know, a, a team that, you know, is able to develop players and move them on as well as remain competitive. You know, it, it's, it's a, you have to find a balance uh, within those, but I think it speaks volumes for us as an organization that within the past, you know, few months, we were able to move on to, you know, teenage promising players uh, onto the EPL. I mean, that speaks volumes to what, you know, it is that we're trying to do here as a club and as an organization. But like I said, we have to balance that with uh, making sure that we remain competitive and re making sure that we're replacing uh, those players that if they do move on with either players from in-house or players uh, that we've, we've scouted, um, that we've recruited to come in, uh, just as we did with Duran. So, you know, it's a it's a tricky uh, situation, but, you know, it's not a bad situation to be in. You know, it, it means that uh, people are looking at your players and it means that your recruiting uh, department is doing a good job of, of finding players, uh, whether, whether it be from abroad or from within homegrown, as we saw with the, the next, uh, the, the past two players, as in Gaga and, and Duran. Um, but, uh, the key is to be able to replace those players. Um, so Brady comes in when Gaga leaves, and now we got to find the next uh, person to come in and, and replace Duran and be as productive as he were, as he was, if not more. So it's a tricky situation, but it's it's, it's not a bad situation to be in. We just got to make sure that we remain competitive and we still uh, are able to, you know, operate as a business, a profiting business. Thank you. Next, we'll go with Ari Lillianwall from MLS. Hey, Ezra. Uh, thanks for the time. Um, kind of along those same lines, but, you know, when you're making uh, transactions uh, like this with Gaga and Duran, with transfers fees so large, um, I mean, you know, how much does that help your uh, flexibility and uh, your ability to strengthen the roster with the increased resources that you have from that. And then kind of going off that, um, do you have any prelim preliminary thoughts on like how you would like to see those resources used as you guys evaluate how you're uh, gonna try and strengthen the team going forward? Thank you. Well, again, um, that, that's an ongoing process. Um, we uh, are aware that we do get to use a portion of that uh, transfer fee as GAM. Um, so. Uh, that we can use the, uh, those resources in that aspect. Um, but for us, the key is just making sure that we're replacing the players uh, as they leave. And that's something that, you know, we've been doing and it's something that, you know, we have a couple uh, players uh, that we've been looking at, not just since this happened, but before. And hopefully, you know, these things sometimes take time, but hopefully we can get this uh, across the line before, you know, March 4th, which is our first game, or, you know, even before that, so we can actually have the player ready for March 4th. But uh, it's an ongoing process. Uh, as an organization, we'll determine, you know, uh, with the resources, how is best uh, to use it and come up with the best solution uh, for us as a club to remain competitive and, 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 you know, attain our goals and which uh, is making the playoffs this year. Uh, that's our number one goal is to get into the playoffs. We felt like we were close enough last year, um, barring injuries and barring some letdowns in a couple of games. Uh, we're right there. So uh, we just want to continue in that vein and make sure that we replace the players uh, that we've, we've lost uh, since uh, October, November. Thank you. Next, we'll go back to Russell. Cool. Just one more question. Just last one. So the last time I spoke to Shakiri, these were some of his words. Um, Duran was linked to Chelsea, Liverpool, and he played for Liverpool. So these were his words. Um, Duran will have to take his time. He's a very good player. You know, um, EPO is very, very difficultly, and he has to take his time. What's, what's personally, do you think Duran will be able to succeed, especially in the EPO? It's a very different league, different players, different fans. It's not like the MLS. Personally, do you foresee him succeeding? Yes, definitely. Um, and I spoke about this last year when I speak of his um, 
uh, his potential and his ceiling, you know, how high that was and how far I, th I thought he could reach as a professional. Um, I think he's going into an environment where he can develop and uh, because he's still just 19 years old, just turned 19 uh, recently. So um, he still have a, a ways to go, but um, I think he has the innate qualities and abilities to really be a, a very successful player in the EPL. Um, and then he's going to an organization that I think he can succeed and hopefully he gets to play right away. But that's always going to be determined based on how he does in training and stuff like that. So, um, and I think, you know, as we saw last year, you know, after, you know, five or six months or so, the kid was ready to step on the pitch and produce. And um, yes, it's a it's a different league. And yes, they're more established league than, than than us because we've just been around 20, some just over 25 years now. But um, I, I think... He has the qualities and the abilities to really be successful uh, in the top leagues in this in this world, um, and most uh, recently and currently the EPL. But the kid has a lot of talent. Um, but you know, it might take some time. You know, going again to a different environment, a different country. Uh, there'll be some uh, cultural uh, differences that he's going to have to overcome and he's going to have to adapt to. But um, he showed. Uh, last year that, you know, he, he can do that. We'll go with two more questions. Next, we'll go with Brian Sandalo, and then we'll end with Jose Gudinho. Brian? Uh, yeah, Ezra, just uh, switching gears a little bit. Uh, Jairo Torres um, obviously had health issues and uh, wasn't quite as productive, I think, as anybody hoped last year. I know it's really early, but how is he looking physically and just what kind of uh, – what do you need out of him this season for this team to be successful? Well, I think um, him just being on the pitch is going to make us that much more successful. He's a very good player, um, very limited by the injuries last year, but I think, you know, he's been in training every day um, and he's looking really, really good. Um, so we're looking forward to, you know, the player that we, you know, we recruited and, and then we brought here uh, to show up um, um, this year. He knows he's a big part of the team and he knows that we need his his production. Um, but, you know, injuries happen in this in, in this sport and it's something that we have to deal with. But um, he's mentally strong. And I think uh, from what I've seen the past few days in training, he's recovered really well from from his injury and he's ready to to perform. So that's an added plus for us um, and all the other guys that, that that was injured, you know, the latter part of the season last year are back and training and doing really well. And we're very, very happy about that. Thank you. Next, we'll end with Jose Gudinho from Conexión Deportiva. Hi, coach. Thanks Thanks for your time. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. Uh, coach, um, quick question. Having the, the, the first week off, uh, do you think this is an advantage for the team, you know, having that extra week of training, you know, before the, the whole season starts? Or might it be probably disadvantaged because uh, you might need that bye week, that off time, maybe halfway through the season or almost at the end of the season? H how do you see this uh, scheduling in, uh, for the team? Well, there's some pros and cons uh, to it. It would be ideal to have this, you know, maybe a week before the, the League Cup starts in, in the, in the midsummer. But um, it is what it is. Um, the positive is we have, you know, five or six guys who we expect to contribute this year who are coming back from injuries. So that gives us an extra week uh, uh, to get them back into the fold of things. So uh, it has its positives and has its negatives, but um, it is what it is. It's, it's decision has been made and we have to make the most of it. And I think uh, if we just think about the positives, uh, just that ability to have guys get an extra week. Um, you know, the Almsberg, the, the Chabelgo, the Gaston Jimenez, you know, Torres that we spoke of, you know, Herbers, these guys uh, getting back in the fold of things um, gives us that extra week with them to train. Um, we're still a team that's gelling, a, still a team that, you know, we're trying to um, mold. So I think that extra week helps. And also it gives us a week to, to watch our opponent, uh, NYCFC, where I've played a game. Um, the week prior so we can, you know, see, you know, what team they put out and, and know what to expect uh, because just from preseason, sometimes it's hard to gauge, you know, what a team's lineup is going to be, how a team is going to play. Sometimes teams change from from, from year to year. So uh, we just want to look at the positives and make the most of it. And I think having that extra week uh, helps us 
being that we have so many injured guys coming back. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Coach. Thanks so much for your time. We really right. appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, guys. For a happy birthday. Hello. Hello. Hello, Rafa. Can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. And again, thank you to all the journalists on the call. Um, as a reminder, please use the raise hand icon if you have a question. And we will get right into it with Brian Sandalo from the Chicago Sun-Times. Sure. Thanks, E. And uh, thanks, Rafa, for making some time for us uh, this afternoon. I hope all is well. And um, just uh, I know it's very early in camp, obviously, but what's the uh, just what's the mindset of the group right now as it embarks on a very long journey? Um, yeah, hi. Um, first of all, uh, I think you can feel it in the whole club that this season um, has to be a special season, and um, yeah, the team seems to be really motivated, uh, all of us, and um, the intensity in. Uh, and at practice is already really high so this is what we need and um, I think it's going to be a good preseason and hopefully then a good uh, regular season. Thank you. Next we'll go with Jose Gudinho from Conexión Deportiva. Hi Rafa, thanks for your time. Uh, Rafa, being this your second season in the MLS with the, with the Chicago Fire, how do you see yourself? I know, um, obviously, last last season the uh, you, you guys didn't make it to the playoffs, but individually, how do you see yourself? The progress that you have uh, made to this league, and what do you expect from this season? Thank yeah, you. first of all, uh, I came here to to uh, help the team and to make the playoffs in my first year, and um, I couldn't reach this goal, but um, I'm. I'm optimistic that this season will be better for us as a team and for me uh, personally. Um, now I know how the whole uh, league, um, like how it is to play in this league, um, how it is to travel all the long distances. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure I will play a better season than my first season was. And um yeah, so I can I can help the team to to reach our goals and um, the minimum goal this year is uh, to make the playoffs and everybody knows it in in our club and um, that's what we're working hard for. Thank you. We'll go back to Brian Sandalo. Sure. Uh, yeah, Rafa. Just uh, with net yesterday's news of uh, John Duran uh, moving on, what's the reaction uh, in the in the in the room when a big transaction like that happens? Um, is is there happiness like seeing a guy go on to the Premier League, or is there a little bit of concern that now you guys have to figure out how to replace him? Um, of course, it was a, a big move, a big transfer for for the club. I think for the whole league. Um, John, I don't know. I think he made like 14 starts last season, scored eight goals. Um, and then after one season, um, yeah, it was really a big move for, for, I don't know, is he 18 or 19? Um, so still, still very young. Um, but we are happy for him. Like he helped us last season. Um, he scored goals. He worked hard for the team. And uh, 
when he feels ready for the next step, then then he should try, and uh, we wish him all the best. And I'm really excited to see uh, how we will do it over there. And um, it's going to be completely different. And yeah, so we wish him a lot of luck. Thank you. Next, we'll go with Miguel AJ from ChicagoFireFC.com. Miguel? Oh, I am technical difficulties. Sorry. My apologies. We'll go back to Jose Gudinho from Conexión Deportiva. Yes, uh, Raf, um, obviously the um, this season, you know, you, you guys start with the, the, the first week off, um, the, the bike week, you know, the starting of the season. Do you think this is an advantage for the team by having an extra week of training, you know, getting the, the whole team together, uh, preventing any injuries uh, and, and all that? Or do you think it's a disadvantage that um, you might need that bye week, uh, maybe halfway through the season or, or or close to the end of the season? I don't know if it's an advantage or disadvantage. Um, I don't like it. So me personally, I don't like it. Um, I would have liked to, to start right away and uh, not to wait one week longer because the preseason is already very long or will be long. And then... You, you want to play, you know, you want to go outside, you want to show the fans that you're ready. And um, yeah, but it is how it is. We have to um, we have to work with it. And um, I think at the end, it doesn't matter if you if you have the break during the season at the beginning or at the end. Um, we want to win all our games, especially at home. So we're going to be ready for for New York. Okay, I think we have overcome our technical issues. And now Miguel AJ from Chicago Fire FC has a question. Apparently not. <laughs> Brian, do you have any other questions? Any follow-ups? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Rafa, for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Um, good thank luck you. with preseason. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good luck.